Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and today we're getting an update on BlackRock Silver. BlackRock Silver is traded on the TSXV under the ticker BRC and on the OTCQX under the ticker BKRRF. And I'm joined today with the president and CEO of BlackRock Silver, Andrew Pollard. And Andrew, great to get you back on the show. We talked about a month ago, and we were digging into, at that time, your m and conversion resource. And this was from a lot of the infill drilling you'd done on the project. But you've also been busy with a lot of expansionary drilling on the project. And in the past, we've talked about the Northwest Step Out. But now you've put out some results to the marketplace on October the 27th. And it really gets into the first holes we've seen from this program at the Eastern Expansion. Now, the Eastern Expansion, you'd put some RC holes in here, but this is the first time you went back with Diamond Drill Core and put out some holes and, you know, some high grade hits as usual. Five meters of 750 grams per ton silver equivalent is the headline hole, but you got a lot of holes in here that paint the picture. Walk us through what you're learning from these first holes released from the Eastern Expansion area. Well, I guess first and foremost, what we're learning is it's getting bigger. Um, you know, this is an incredibly ambitious drill program because we're targeting effectively a, a 1.2 kilometer trend that bolts uh, right onto our existing mine plan, our, our DPB South resource area, all the way along the outer margin of, uh, we, we call it an outer ring structure of mineralization that spans all the way to the eastern edge of our property, where it looks like we found uh, the extension of what was the second last producing mine in the district, which was called Ohio. And um, yeah, earlier this year, we did a scout exploration program, which really just means we took an RC rig out there to try and get some more data and see what we could find. And we hit on seven drill holes across that entire 1.2 kilometer trend. So in July, we wanted to get core rigs into this um, so we could get better data, confirm the structures that we hit in that initial pass on the RC rig, and really start growing out the model with an aim to adding tonnage, adding ounces, and most importantly, adding mine life. And yeah, the initial holes that we just put out um, uh, confirmed We've got some nice, thick zones of mineralization that we've hit. Really, you know, this Ohio target um, out on the eastern edge of our property, I mean, that that headline number you hit, you know, 5.3 meters of 750 grams per ton silver equivalent, it actually complements some of the scout drilling that we had on that same structure earlier this year, where we hit 4.5 meters of I think it was around 950 grams per ton and, and also uh, 1.2 meters of about two kilograms per ton. So this Ohio target out there is looking like, um, uh, well, it's something we can really, really build on, both in terms of, you know, nice thick zones, but also some high grades. Like for that five meter zone that we just hit with core, it had uh, 1.83 meters in there of 1660 silver equivalent. So the more results that come in, certainly in this zone, you know, the more strings, more threads we have to pull up moving forward. And um, we've still got quite a lot of assays in the lab. You know, we also, towards the eastern edge of our DPB South resource area, which is effectively the representation of the early years of our conceptual mine plan, just east of that, we hit some re also some really thick zones. We hit up to eight meters in one, 8.75 meters of just under 200 grams per ton silver equivalent. You know, internal to that, we about uh, 0.8 meters of 1,200 silver equivalent in there. In addition, we had a 5.67 meter zone of around 260 as well, which also had a nice high grade interval of uh, about 1.1 meters of just under a kilogram per ton silver equivalent. So, you know, the model sort of building from the edges of our resource area and the edge of the property and we're working our way inwards across this trend but you know this is a whole area that this time last year we never even contemplated so this blows the door off any sort of upside potential um, that we've ever had at the project and what's nice about it is it looks like it's all bolt on to what we're already looking at in terms of developing you know these aren't standalone targets these are stuff that you know, hopefully we'll be able to access at the same decline should we be able to advance it forward. Yeah, so a lot of positives here stacking up because you're expanding from DPP South. This is a whole new zone. You test it with an RC, you come back with some diamond drill core, and then 
you highlighted not just the headline hole there, which was out of hole number 166, but you also mentioned that hole 159 and hole 164. Building the case here, you still have 13 more drill holes to report from this Eastern Expansion Drill Program. So this whole area is massing up with thicker zones, high grade. But just remind people also, we've had discussions on some of the prior expansion you did in the totally other direction with the Northwest Step Out. So really the whole project is expanding in multiple directions here. Yeah, well, well, absolutely. I mean, earlier this year, and I think we put out the last of the drill results in July from a program we called the Northwest Expansion Program. And this was targeting bolt-on mineralization from that same DPB area to the Northwest. And that program was wildly successful from our perspective because we were able to lock in effectively 500 meters of strike extension in between. I think it, we ended up with between 10 and 15 um, holes into it um, that returned some really good grades. I mean, in, in that northwest zone, we hit some intervals ranging from 8 meters, 10 meters, 11 and a half meters, all between, say, 400 and 800 grams per ton silver equivalent. So, you know, once again, bolt-on mineralization, that area would represent the later years in our in our mine plan as it starts working its way a little deeper in that section. But bigger is better. And, you know, I think we've, we, we're already looking at a nice little bump in terms of potentially mineable ounces once we get to our point early next year where we can update uh, our resource estimate again and also update our PEA, which uh, we hope to show much longer in mine life. Well, let's get into that next, just because when you put out the M&I resource, and we discussed that last time, it was really to build on the continuity and the high confidence of the resources that you have in place and demonstrate to the marketplace that, you know, you filled in a lot of the areas. All of this drilling, the expansion drilling, both the Northwest Step Out and this Eastern Expansion, is going to fuel into the resource update targeted for, I think, Q1, but that's going to come out in tandem with the updated economics. So maybe just give people a sense of what's coming down the pipeline for the beginning of next year. Yeah, well, a lot. I mean, we're going to finish this year on a strong suit because, you know, as as I mentioned, you know, we've got 13 more holes in the lab pending assays, which uh, we hope will really build out our model and allow us to add quite a bit of tonnage on this eastern zone. And as we've already locked in this 500 meter zone to the northwest with some really thick zones of high grade mineralization, we're really looking forward to getting uh, everything wrapped up with a pretty little bow into a, an updated resource estimate. But most importantly, uh, an updated PEA because ounces are good, but mineable ounces are better. And we want to show the market exactly what sort of project this can be. So um, that PEA update um, that'll have the new resources, yeah, on track for Q1, where we, you know, that last PEA from 2024, which was obviously based off of the 2024 uh, resource estimate, that showed about uh, an eight-year mine life. So our goal, uh, an eight-year mine life at a 1,500 ton per day mill. So our goal for our updated PEA is uh, to take our mine life, you know, to 10 years or beyond, you know. That resource that we just released in September was really not focused on expanding any new zones of mineralization. It was focused on drilling out the first two to three years of conceptual production based off of that initial mine plan. And we were quite successful there. So, you know, we showed the market definitively that, you know, we converted from inferred to indicated about a, about 100 percent of what we set out to do. That PEA last year was based off of $1,900 gold and $23 silver, and and it, it had a 2.3-year payback period. So what we wanted to show the market with that one was that, one, we could convert what we wanted to, but most importantly, we wanted to de-risk the project through that initial payback period. So uh, that resource that we just put out was 1.33 million tons at um, just under a half kilogram block diluted grade for for our indicated and that 1.33 million tons if you do the math based off of a 1500 ton per day mill works out to about 2.6 years worth of initial production so we were very successful with that but most importantly now this PA updates uh, uh, in Q1 
it's going to be focused on making it bigger and better. So, um, you know, we've got the engineers back in the data looking at optimizing not only the early years and helping us refine um, that initial uh, exploration decline, which we're doing a lot of the hard yards behind the scenes right now to get permitted, but it's also going to be look at optimizing and, and expanding through the later years as well. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to. The project's going to take another big step forward, uh, right as the market's starting to care about silver again. Well, Andrew, just to that point about the market finally starting to care about silver again, we were talking off mic that it's interesting to see how these markets move more on sentiment sometimes than logic. When you think about where the silver price was a month or two back, it's just returned back to the same price it was in the mid to high 40s now. I think a lot of people got excited when silver got up over 50, and rightly so. It hadn't happened in 45 years. We'd never seen prices up to $53, $54 before. But it's all gravy for a project like this because you could operate at even much lower prices of silver. Any producer worth their salt is going to be making money at these prices. And if people expect silver to keep even going higher over time into the 50s again and maybe the 60s, that just makes the economics sing. But maybe talk about the defensive side of this project that you could go down to lower prices and that this is a incredibly low as far as what the cost will be and the economics around it. So maybe talk about how this project works at any silver price. Well, that's the, that, that's the best thing about it. You know, they say grade is king. Um, and this is easily the highest grade, large development stage project in the world right now by a country mile at that. And, you know, it's not just great. It's about, you know, metallurgical ease as well. You know, what really makes us stand out is that it's, it's our project is one of the few that's just gold and silver, which means that, you know, there's nothing else in our silver equivalents, meaning it makes for much easier, straightforward, boring metallurgy in terms of actually processing it. Um, we don't have to go through flotation. We don't have to make lead and zinc concentrates. We don't have to get smelters involved. This is just a um, two-stage crushing circuit, a ball mill, and then you run it through effectively a Merrill Crow plant and um, it leaches out very, very quickly and easily. So not only is it high grade, but it's quite cheap to actually process and there's no middleman along the way. So between that and also the geometry of the project, which Uh, I think right now looks like about 80% of the mining can be done by a long hole stoping, which is very, very cheap as conventional underground mining methods go. Yeah, the stars definitely align here. You know, we don't need silver to be 50 bucks or 60 bucks or, or hell, even 30 bucks. This is a project that, you know, will really work in any pricing environment. And, you know, not only that, I mean... I, Given what's going on in the world right now, I mean, there's no better setup to be than developing a critical minerals project like this in the USA. You know, we're seeing a lot of support and I guess offers of help from the federal government to expedite certain things. And also, you know, if you follow the news releases with other developers, it looks like the government's really not just walking the talk, but um, opening up the purse strings to drive domestic production. And, you know, Given we're on private land and this can be expedited very quickly towards underground development, which, you know, we're targeting for 2027, we think that, you know, would be a great candidate for some of that uh, Bank of Uncle Sam money moving forward as well. Yeah, Andrew, I'm rooting for you to get some of that Bank of Uncle Sam money or Daddy Warbucks money we've been calling it. So uh, <laughs> keep our fingers crossed for you there. One other nuance I want to maybe have you dig into. I had a couple questions come in after our last interview from people, when we talk about it being one of the highest grade silver projects that's undeveloped, we're also talking about it from a head grade level. And this gets a little confusing for some people. When you're talking about head grade and you're talking about reserves in an economic study, the idea being that's what you actually mine. So that's what you're going to be putting through the milling process and plant and all that. So in that kind of a scenario, Talk about how it distinguishes this project at Tonopah West from other projects you see out there where their head grade is quite a bit less. Even if their resource grade may be similar, that's different than what you actually mine. There's resources and then there's reserves. So maybe break down that nuance for people. Yeah, well, you know, we present our resources very differently than most everyone else in the industry because we factor in quite a lot of dilution into our resource. So... You know, our indicated grade, for example, is 493 grams per ton, but that's block diluted, whereas most of our peers present undiluted, which means, 
you know, you, sure, you get this nice, big looking grade number on the resource, but ultimately, once you move into uh, economic scenarios and you run stop optimizers over it, that's when they actually have to take the dilution. So the head grade is really where you get that true apples to apples comparison of what you're actually mining. Because with resources, there's 20 different ways to hide the ball. We just choose not to in, in how we present ours. So, you know, when you see our, our inferred grade of 525 grams per ton and our indicated grade of 493, it's safe to say that this is a much truer representation of what you'll actually get in a mining scenario than a lot of our peers um, who... You know, you look at their resource grades and then you actually go to their mining scenarios and that they all fall off a cliff. They all fall off by 25 to 40 percent. Ours doesn't. Well, Andrew, just final thoughts here as we wrap up. What else do you want to leave investors with as far as the value proposition as you're building towards these key documents, the resource and the updated economics next year, all the permitting all the metallurgical testing, all the engineering work, all the different components coming together. What do you want to leave people with as far as the key value drivers for the company moving into the end of this year and beginning of next year? Well, you know, obviously the volatility in prices, um, you, you know, it's exciting on the way up and it's a little scary on the way down. But, you know, what really excites me is the volume. You know, in September, for example, we traded 96 million shares here in Canada this month, it looks like we're pacing for about 70 to 75 million shares when all is said and done. Now, to put that in context, that represents about 50% of our float just in the last two months. You know, we're clearly stepping on the right radars here. And, you know, we're advancing our project, you know, not only cheaper, but quicker than just about anyone in the industry for a vein hosted deposit. We only made our discovery five years ago. And, you know, right now we're looking at getting this thing permitted. So, you know, there's lots of mineral inventory plays out there that are always just looking at stacking ounces and putting out some flashy headlines. With us, we see something that we can move forward and develop quite uh, expediently here because at the end of the day, you know, discoveries like this don't come around all that often. And um, this is something that uh, we think we can get permitted, certainly entirely during the Trump administration and and um, who knows where silver will be in 2028 or gold or in certainly 2029 but as I say you know going back to September 2024 when we put that initial PA out that base case was done at $1,900 gold and $23 silver and it was wildly robust at those levels so Right now, we're just putting our head down. We're working a plan. Things are coming together nicely. People wanted to see earlier this year that the high grade actually hung together, that we could convert our inferred to indicated. We did that. People now want to see if we can actually materially grow the project. It's looking good based off this first results and what we've already locked in to the Northwest. And, you know, as I said, behind the scenes, we've got a whole lot of de-risking activities going underway. Uh, on right now, you know, from hydrology programs to uh, waste rock characterization, you know, all the environmental aspects that we need to have answers for so that when we make our submission to the regulators next year, it's going to be a very, very easy decision for them. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there. But yeah, a lot of catalysts going on for the company with all the de-risking work going on in the background. Of course, like we mentioned at the onset, we still have 13 more holes, assays to report from this eastern expansion drilling. And when you marry that up with all the Northwest step out drilling that you've already done, you're going to have this expanding resource there for people to take a look at here at the very beginning of 2026. So a lot's going on for the company and lots of news on tap. For those of you listening in, if you want to follow along with all the news, definitely click on the link below in the show notes. It takes you right over to the Black Rock Silver website, straight to their news section where you can sign up for updates that hit your email inbox or just follow along with the news as the next set of assays drop. Andrew, I'm sure we'll be talking again when you get more of those results back in. And like always, looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you. Much appreciated.